welcome back. So we are back in Ultra Flex today. Going to take you through a pull session. We will dig straight in. Now, over the past while, well, the past like four weeks or so, we've been running kind of a, we, we tried a different split. So it's been push, pull, legs, rests, push, pull, rests. So set, set rest days. And on that second pull day, that's already on our hinge, you know, so our already else. But recovery, we just weren't recovering the way we needed. Okay, so push, pull, rest, legs, rest is always the split that I see the most progression with. And every time I try and veer away from it, I always end up coming back to it just because I don't really see the same from every from, from any other split, but I haven't. You know what I mean? I feel like push, pull, rest, legs, rest enables me to really be able to give everything to every session and have enough recovery in between to see like big fucking strength progressions you know pretty much every session so we're going to revert back from that we had our first push there yesterday we have pull today then we'll have rest tomorrow legs rest and then we'll we go back to the all reliable so we will dig into this push day push day it's been a while we will dig into this pull day today i'll run you through kind of what we're doing the sequence of exercises the reason behind certain things as well and hopefully but a couple of tips I give, and even by kind of looking at the way I do things, you may pick up a few bits, you may not, but either way, I hope you enjoy. Um, please do like, share, subscribe. Um, as always, I have to plug that, because I want to keep doing this. I want to keep putting these videos out. I really enjoy doing them, and I want to document, you know, my off season coming up for the rest of this year, before prep starts at potentially the end of the year. So um, yeah, please do like, share, subscribe. It would mean a lot and i'm gonna try to keep these coming out pretty much weekly from here so hold me accountable if i don't message me call me out on my shit um but yeah let's get into it oh Okay, so starting off with abs today, pull day. I usually do hanging leg raises before my back work. So the reason being is because I don't really want to do ab work when I'm finished. I find getting it done, getting out of the way at the start, it's perfect because then I can get into the session, it's already done, it's already forgotten about. Plus, I feel like doing some ab work at the start of a session kind of enables you to engage your core a little bit better. So when you go into your bigger movements, I feel like you're able to brace a little bit better as well, to be honest with you. So usually before pull days, hanging leg raises, usually before push days, we do uh, cable crunches and just rotate them too. I don't really do ab work on leg days, but on rest days, I will do some bodyweight stuff at home and planks as well uh, and then every morning i will do my vacuums not because i can vacuum but i feel like it enables me to just kind of maintain some sort of mid-section mid -section control especially during off season when food gets higher and volume is higher which can distend the gut a little bit <sighs> I used to be so mature. So before, before actually getting the back work as well, I just like fucking it out really. <laughs> just kind of getting some blood into the upper back, into the lats. You see me there doing pullovers, upper back rows, and just, just really trying to open everything and get some blood in there. Just before I actually start going into, you know, the actual session. So just priming myself, getting things moving. Nothing special, nothing scientific about it. Just fucking doing what makes me feel good and getting my head in the right spot ready to go in to actually attack the actual sets, basically. So we're starting off with the single arm, knotless lat pull down. So I feel like when I go in to do lat work, and it's dual arm, I just feel like I don't get the same from it. So if I do this dual, I feel like obviously we're trying that too when I drive the elbow right down to the hip. And I feel like when I'm doing dual, I just can't get that, even, even a row as well. So you'll see when I'm doing that work, we will tend to go for a single arm because I feel like I can really drive that elbow down in comparison to two where it just feels a little bit awkward. So for, for me personally, for Cooper personally, 
we prefer single arm stuff for, lot, for lots. So single arm lap pull down, I'll talk you through a few cues as we go through. On the, on the single arm here, we're going one arm. So I'm doing an arm, Cooper's doing an arm, I'm doing an arm. Because if there's two of you, don't waste the energy going straight into the next arm when you're already pretty fucked from the first arm. Just let them go. Then by the time it comes around to your arm, you jump straight back in. And then you'll be more recovered and ready to give everything that opposite arm as well. So yeah, I said this before, but single arm stuff, single leg stuff, you can go straight back into the arm or leg. But I think if you're a training partner, they go, you go, they go, you go. I think it just saves a lot more energy for being able to put everything else into that next arm or leg. Okay. Let's go. Yes. Right, so a couple of cues I like to think of when it comes to this is when I wrap up, I don't like to wrap too tight. I just like to wrap enough just to kind of have the hand locked in. Then when I sit into it, I will use the opposite hands to kind of like pull myself in or like brace against it just to keep myself in that upright position and be able to just kind of create some counter force. So when you lock in, you can generate more force down. Whereas if you don't have your hand on it at all, you'll find that that way will try and kind of carry you around. Or if that hand is locked in, you have full control then and you're locked into that one stable position to generate a bit more force as well. Um, and then when I'm pulling, I think about dragging rather than yanking. So rather than just tugging it, actually thinking about driving down with the elbow rather than just reefing that weight down. So it's easy to put a load of weight on and just kind of pull, but think about where are you pulling from? I think about driving through my elbow and dragging down rather than yanking. Oh. Second exercise, second, second back exercise, chest support T-bar row. This is actually our fourth session today running this, so a bit of a different approach today. We're just going to put a plate on at a time and then kind of gauge where our working weight is going to be. Instead of putting on too much weight today, I'd rather put on a weight where I know I can just make it perfect and make it absolutely bang on for my rep range. And then that'll be my starting point then for going forward as we run this into the future as well. Touch one plate, two plates, I'll touch three and then see how that feels and then kind of gauge my working weight off that. Um, we're using this instead of the prime extreme row, which it just kind of stopped progression, progressing for both of us. It didn't, wasn't connecting as much, so this feels beautiful. So let's see how it runs. Let's see how it feels, but this is more than likely what we're going to run here in this session as the second movements. So uh, yeah, let's, let's see how it feels. Yes. Yes. Take it. Beautiful. Yes. I guess you won't be taking three plates. <laughs> so, Cuba actually worked at three. So, um, I'll, I'll put two and a half on and work at that because I know I'll pull the movements. He definitely is a little bit stronger. So, uh, I'll play it smart. I'll go two and a half. And, uh, yeah. Okay, let's see how it feels. With this, you will see as I stretch out, I'm trying to keep my chest up tall. So as I stretch out, I'm reaching away from myself. Chest stays tall rather than kind of coming over with it. But shoulder blades are really coming forward. Chest stays tall. And as I drive through, I think about almost like drive my chest forwards as I bring the shoulder blades back into it as well. The last thing I want to do is pull and like just pull my arms and then lean up with it as well. Um, I'm looking for shoulders kind of coming forward, chest staying tall. And as I roll, come through, shoulders come on back into it as well. Um, and really kind of really nail on that upper back. Okay. Oh. Oh. Fuck me. I feel that with this and any sort of road, something I used to do in the past as well, it's very easy just to put on more weight and just kind of pull with the arms and swing. But like, 
I literally can't even feel my arms pulling. Like, my hands are literally just hooks, like so. No pump in my bicep or forearm, but my back is absolutely lit up already. So don't be afraid to actually pull the weight back a little bit. Think about the muscle you're actually using, 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 and then build that weight up and progress it over time as well. Rather than just putting on a load of weight, I just pull through the arms. So uh, that's not much weight there, but that hit me absolutely perfectly. And I know over time now, I'll build that up to three, four plates, but with that same execution. In saying that, we're not, not kind of throwing too much weight on for the sake of it. If you can get away with putting weight on and just kind of gripping and ripping and still seeing your back grow, amazing. I, I can't. And this is why bodybuilding and that training is so individual because for me, back is a back is a body part that I struggle to connect with and I, str I have struggled to grow. So I really have to think about it and think of what I'm doing. Otherwise, I just pull up my arms and my biceps, etc. as well. So, you know, ask yourself, if you struggle to grow your back, do you need to be thinking a bit more into it or do you get away with just fucking rolling, I'm not having to think. If you do, amazing, you're lucky. Okay, so, toward movement, single arm, side back to machine row. So again, same concept with this as well, as a single arm pull down, I'm looking to just brace in against that pad just so I can lock myself into position and then just focus on that arm because the more stable I am, the more power I can really fucking drive that arm with. So um, again, you will see in this as well, I'm thinking about having a slight pause in the stretch and then a slight contraction as well. So I'm not over exaggerating, I'm not like stretching for like two, three seconds and squeezing for like three seconds, but I'm just having full control of each of the end ranges. So in the stretch, little pause, in the contraction, little pause, and it just kind of reassures my mind of really kind of feeling every part of it. And um, I'm pulling through my actual back as well. So same thing on this. I'm thinking about dragging rather than just gripping and just fucking pulling through my forearms, basically. One more tip on this as well. Well, one more thing I like to think of. As I stretch, I think about reaching away from myself. So rather than just like, like letting that go forwards, I think about keeping my chest tall and like driving my elbow down and reaching away. And I feel like this just helps me open my lat a little bit more coming to the stretch. Oh. 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 This is my intro bottle. As you can see, it has not been changed for God knows how long. I have a thing, I will use this bottle for fucking so long. I, people always give it to me for it, but it's like a little ritual. I don't know what it is. It's like a superstition. I can't use fresh bottles all the time. My intro bottles always look like they have AIDS. Now, in the intro, 60 grams of carb drive by Conte. Mark 10 at checkout. Look, 25 grams of essential gains and um, contain amino acids, five grams of creatine and five grams of glutamine. So that is intro workout concoction at the moment, but I'm sure them carbs will, will come up as we get deeper into this off season. I'll probably go max maybe 80 grams. I feel like when I go higher than that, digestion and the gut doesn't like it during the session as well, but we'll see. Digestion has been really good this off season, so who knows? Assisted pull-ups, again, you're seeing a new session here because we haven't done these before. But um, we're gonna use this instead of an upper back pull down. So let's see how these go because <laughs> these are gonna be hard.
so we actually are going to run the extreme route today. So we're just seeing how this session feels as it goes and kind of seeing what, what's, what's going to work in it. So we're actually going to do this now at the end of the session with the loading a little bit different and see how it feels. The warm felt actually pretty good. It's crazy how little adjustments can make an exercise feel so different because here I adjust my foot position and I put, put a wider as well so I can brace better. So now as I row, it feels better. It, it's weird. So when you get into a machine, don't just get in and be like, nah, that doesn't feel good or whatever. Adjust things around a little bit because now I put this at the end of the session and adjust my foot position and pad position as well. All of a sudden it, feel, it feels good. So let's see how it feels. It may not feel good working, but uh, let's see how it feels. But, so far, this session has been really fucking good. So if we get, if this feels good, that'll be kind of this session set in stone now for going forwards. But um, yeah, so far so good. Let's see how this feels. Okay. So that felt good. That felt good. So we, it looks like we're run with this. See how the second set feels. And then we can kind of go from there. But uh, no, I'm happy because this is nice. I fucking like the extreme row, but some weeks it feels bang on. Some weeks it feels terrible. You know, so that pisses me off, which is why we kind of pull it out. I don't want to pull it out completely because when it's good, it's really good. <laughs> so have to find a good position. And once we find that, it should be perfect. My back feels fully blown. Just everything is just like, just full of blood. Everything is just open, which is a very, very nice feeling. Rather than in the past where I may have been going through a back session and <laughs> my forearms just pumped, my biceps pumped, feeling fucked, but my back not really sore, which it's training hard, but not actually training what I'm meant to be training. So uh, just a, a bit of a, a shift in mindset or like a smarter approach this off season in particular. Um, which I'll go through in a, in a bit, but uh, it's definitely led to a much higher standard of growth so far, which I think results speak for themselves. If something's working, it leaves clues. <laughs> Oh yes. Oh fuck. I think my back has grown. I hope my back has grown. It feels like it's grown. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see when I dive back down. We'll see when I get when I get back on stage. Because it's all good. It's all good in off season saying something has grown. Pictures it looks like it's grown. But I think when you get on stage and you stand next to people and you diet down, <laughs> we see if that body part stays around or fucking falls apart. But uh, no, no, it, it is breast. It definitely, definitely is. It's probably one of my most progressed body parts so far this off season. So uh, it needs to be. Fucking everything needs to be, but we're, we're never happy. But no, it definitely is improving. And even though it's not where it needs to be, it's improving. You know what I mean? So like, what more, what more can we ask for? You know, I think that's something to remember that you may not be where you want to be. Your body parts may not be where you want them to be. But if you're improving, you're getting better, you'll eventually fucking get there. So stop looking at like where you're, where you're not and look at the progress you're making and the steps you're taking to eventually fucking get to that point that you want to be at. Let's go. Oh yes. Oh. Right, so final set of extreme row into a DC stretch, which is basically a stretch, pull the lat pull down down, and just let that fucking tear our lats apart. And this will really, really kind of force loads of fresh blood in just after 
just drawing back. So uh, this is disgusting, but it feels fucking nice. After it's done, let's go. Okay. Oh, the goal with that is to hold for as long as you can. For me, that was only 50 seconds there. So I'll actually try and progress that each week. And next week I'll try 55 or 60 seconds. But um, try that, I actually do that at the end of every single session. Even legs, even push as well. And I feel like for overall shoulder health, it's something cool we got me doing when we first started training together. And we've been doing it ever since. And honestly, it's made a big difference with overall shoulder mobility and just kind of range of motion I can get in pressing, in like pull downs, etc. as well. Even though that range of motion of mine is still fucking not good, it's a lot better. So uh, yeah, try it, see what you think. So for back, finished off with shrugs. So we're doing this on the prime row, as you will see. So you will see that like a lot of people think with shrugs, like your traps. It's like pulling up to your ears here, which it is, that, that is your traps. But even if you stand here now and just go like this, right? Come up and back and straight away, you can probably see it there on my traps already. You know, up and back, they connect straight away. So try that and you will see that connection. So people forget that function of the traps is to come up and back like this. So you will see that with the prime row, we're holding it here and we're shrugging back into herself. And uh, this, I love this for, for, for traps. I absolutely love it. So uh, two sets here to finish off and this really finishes our back off after fucking everything else being smashed already. So nearly there. With back being finished there, just a sequence of them exercises that we actually done today. There is a thought process behind it. So like I said, we started off with the single arm lap pull down first. So that's hitting our lats from like, you know, from like a pull down variation. Then we went into an upper back row, which was the, the chest apart T-bar row. Then we went into a single arm lat row. Okay, so we already done the pull down first. So the lat row was toward. And then we went into another upper back movement, which was the assisted pull up. Now, obviously these movements are gonna work every fucking single part of our back, not just lats, not just upper back, but they bias certain areas, you know, so you can feel it more in certain areas than others. So just like the T-bar, if you do a T-bar, you're gonna feel it more in your in your kind of upper back than you would in your lats. But it's still gonna be a fucking back movement. So uh, that's the top process behind it. Um, and then finishing off with the extreme row, which is gonna be for upper back. Now the reason why you finished off with that is like most people don't even need to think about resistance profiles and loading things in different areas with the prime kit, etc. as well. But you know, for us, our back was already smashed. Okay, so we actually put a lot of the load in here in the in the stretch if you want to call it that, rather than the contraction, where we're at our strongest at the end of the session, because if we put it where we're weakest, which is the contraction at the end of the session, like as you pull through, you're going to be weak there after your back is already fried. So you're strongest in the stretch. So we load on most in the stretch, just to really fucking finish off the back there. So most people just be like, just fucking lift away. But that's the thought process behind it. It was a good session. My back is smoked. And now finishing off the back portion with some traps, yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty boring, there's no massive movements in this, such as like, like a leg day or RDLs or anything like this, but I feel like that's one of the reasons as to why my back has come up during this, just during this phase, is because everything is just really fucking nailed down on my back and very specific. At the end of the day, yes, them big movements are needed, but at the same time, you know, we're bodybuilders as well. So we have to think of like, what's gonna do the job for the body parts that we need to be brought up at that given time. So everyone's different, everyone needs different things. So uh, always bear that in mind. Just because I'm doing something doesn't mean you have to. Just because someone else is doing something and they're growing or whatever, doesn't mean you have to do it. Just always have that in the back of your mind when looking at other people or other things, etc.
three sets of single arm um, cable preacher curl, and then three sets of single arm um, curl kind of facing away. So the preacher is going to really kind of work that short range of, of the bicep, like the, the short head, and then the facing away are kind of really stretching out. It's going to work the long head. Two different type of curls. Biceps are very fucking simple. Not too heavy, just make them fucking hurt. Put as much blood in as possible. Now with, with biceps as well, as I was chatting to Cuba there, we're, we're thinking about putting in an arm day in between like pull and, and legs. But he said right now, he was like, just leave it out, rest on that day, and then do some extra arm volume before we actually start our leg session on the leg day as well. So we'll try it. Maybe next rotation, I'll try the arm day as well, and we'll just fucking, we'll see kind of what I can recover from and kind of what's giving me the best response as well. And then we go from there. But yeah, so it's triceps at the end of push day, biceps at the end of pull day, and then we'll try arms at the start of leg day this week and see how that feels. But uh, yeah, two biceps, one rear delt, and then that's it. Oh, fuck that. Fucking hate training arms. In the past, again, I used to lift like very heavy with biceps and triceps. I was like, right, I need big arms. I, I need to lift heavy to fucking get these to grow. I realized, again, I was getting to the end of an arm, like um, uh, like arm movements, and I wasn't even feeling like a full connection from them. So I actually started pulling the weight back a little bit, getting full contractions, full connections, and then building back up from there. And even with slightly lighter loads, and actually getting a proper connection and getting them full of blood, and progressing weight slowly from there, I felt like that's giving me a better response as well. Um, because again, I may be doing the movements, but if I'm just doing the movement and bringing everything into it, it wasn't giving me what I needed at that time. So this is very light, but my arms are in more pain than they ever have been training arms, and I'm seeing more progression. So I think for you, uh, Joe, I'd say it's interesting seeing, like recording different people and seeing their different styles and different methods, etc., as well, because everyone's completely different. But again, it, it works for everyone. Like if you look at like, Jimmy, we're all seeing progression, but it's completely different styles. There's, you know, there's a hundred ways to skin a cat. There's no secret. It's just finding what works for you, enjoying the process, enjoying it, and just fucking staying patient with it, you know? Okay, so biceps finished. Three sets of reverse pec deck, the rear delts, and then that's what's finished. With this, one key what I think of, as I get into it, I think about pushing my hands forward and away from me. And then when I'm dragging, I think about, imagine scraping my knuckles across the wall in front of me and dragging out. So you'll see a lot of the time people are like, just gonna pull back and pull like back all the way behind them. So I actually think about pressing out in front of me and then pushing forward and dragging out. And straight away, it's gonna connect a lot more in comparison to having the arms bent and just kind of pull them backwards. So try it, protract the shoulder blades as you come, okay? And then think about dragging outwards. Straight away, my rear delts light up very easy. With this as well, I don't need crazy load on this either. I feel like when I lift crazy load again, I lose, I lose connection. It's not all about connection. It's not just like, if it was about connection, we could just do like 100 push-ups and expect to grow a massive chest. So it's not just down to connection. Connection is super important, but then there must be progressive loading alongside that or progressive stimulus to some extent. More reps, better execution every time, better connection every time, more weight each time. It can't just be going in, doing a few push-ups, getting a pump and growing from that. There needs to be some sort of progression for that growth of a core. Connection is important. Actually feeling the muscle they're working, I think, I think it is important. Otherwise, you know, a lot of the time, you would just be going, doing the movement for doing the movements, rather than actually thinking of the muscle that 
you are working. Don't forget, we're not powerlifters. We're not trying to just move the bar from your chest up or from the ground up. We're trying to do it to stimulate muscle and to break down tissue along the way. So bodybuilders, not powerlifters. If your goal is hypertrophy, always have that in mind. Oh. Right guys and girls, so that is the session wrapped up. So really, really good session today. Um, like I was saying during the session, there was a couple of things we wanted to see how they felt and kind of iron out and readjust the session a little bit. Obviously because this is the kind of the start of us going back to that old split. So we just wanted to make sure that the way we ran this session today, we kind of made sure that everything felt really fucking good. So now we can just run this going forwards over the next few months, basically. So it felt good. We'll see how we feel tomorrow. We'll see how recovery is over the next few days. But that was a really, really nice session, to be fair. It was nice having different movements in there, such as T-bar row, such as the um, assisted pull-ups as well. You know them movements that are just kind of like, just basic bodybuilding movements. You know, no fancy machines, just a chest support, a T-bar, a pull-up. I, uh, I, I love that. Um, but yeah, so yes, like I said, guys, I will keep these coming if you find them interesting. Obviously, when I'm in the gym, I'm a little bit more serious. I'm not as chatty. I'm not as like, kind of just fucking, I don't really mess about. I do have a laugh kind of in between sets and stuff, but you probably see that I'm just a little bit more serious at the minute here. So the vlogs will be kind of more, probably my personality to, to, to an extent. And then these sessions will be a bit, hopefully a bit more informative and hopefully you will kind of take stuff from these as well. But um, I hope you enjoy, uh, enjoy it guys. Like, share, subscribe. It would mean a lot, I appreciate it. Over the next while I'll kind of go through what the plans are, wait the next few months and what the next year is kind of looking like as well in terms of like, plans to compete, etc. too. So stay tuned and I will go through all this.